one with a mass of 120 grams and traveling at 12 meters per second collides head on with ball two which has a mass of 350 grams and is initially at rest. What is the final velocity of the ball one if the collision is perfectly elastic? What's the final velocity of ball two if the collision is perfectly elastic? And then what is the final velocities of both balls if both equation or if both um, collisions are inelastic? So we have a ball traveling at 12 meters per second and it collides with a ball which is at rest, 0 meters per second. And ball 1 has a mass of 120 grams, which is 0 0.12 kilograms. And ball 2 has a mass of 350 grams, which is 0 0.35 kilograms. So they want to know about elastic uh, collisions. So these equations, I'm just going to give them to you because the algebra to derive them is kind of hairy. So if we want to find the final velocity of ball 1, that is m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 times by the initial velocity of ball 1. And if we want to find the final velocity of ball 2, that equation is 2 times the mass of ball 1 divided by the total mass m1 plus m2 times again by the initial velocity of ball 1. Okay, let's look at this and we have everything so now we just have to plug, it, plug everything in. I'm going to give us a little more room. So V1 final is equal to M1, which is 0.12 minus M2, which is 0.35, divided by 0.12 plus 0.35, times by the initial speed of ball one, which is 12 meters per second. So when we get that, we get a final speed of ball one, which is negative 5.872 meters per second, or rounded for um, mastering physics, a negative 5.9 meters per second. So the, the negative answer should be there, because what we're saying is ball one comes in here and smashes into ball two and ball two bounces off this way and ball one bounces back that way. So since its velocity is changing in the opposite direction, it was initially positive 12 meters per second, but now it's a negative 5.9 because it's going in the opposite direction, of course. And the, the second ball is it going to be a positive value because it's going on in the same direction as our ball one was. Because remember, an elastic collision is where they don't stick and they say it's perfectly elastic so they bounce off each other and go in opposite directions. Alright so now V2 final is 2 times M1 which is 0.12 divided by 0.12 plus 0.35 times again by 12 meters per second and that gives us a final velocity of 6.128 meters per second rounded for mastering physics is 6.1 meters per second okay so now we're done with all the elastic stuff and let's talk about inelastic well what does the definition of inelastic means it means they come in obviously they come in ooh that was a terrible arrow they come in and they smash and perfectly inelastic means they don't bounce off from each other at all so they turn into one big globby mass so we could say this is M3 which is both of them together well that sounds a whole lot like conservation of momentum right so let's do that let's say M1 V1 plus m2v2 equals m3v3 
And so conceptually, what we're saying is they turn into one big giant mass, but in the, the question up here, they say what's the final velocity of ball one, and what's the final velocity of ball two if the equation is perfectly inelastic? Well, it's gonna be the exact same, because now it's just one big giant ball. So let's solve for V3. So we have M1V1 plus M2V2, all divided by M3, or I'm gonna rewrite it just so it's a little clearer, M1 plus M2 equals V3, and I'll put final. All right, so M1 and, whoops, looks like there's one thing we can even simplify down. So M2 right here, is initially at rest. So mass times zero velocity is zero. So now it's even easier. We have m1 v1 over the total mass m1 plus m2 gives us v3 final. So m1 of course is 0.12 times its initial speed of 12 meters per second divided by 0.12 plus 0.35 and that gives us a final speed for both balls of 3.1 meters per second for ball one and 3.1 meters per second for ball two.